Okay, so welcome everybody to another streaming. This is the third one related with the Art Plant Mall or Fear Summary UI Challenge. Uh, I have a special feeling with this UI because it's the first one that uh, I use it to, to start these streaming activities. So let's continue. I have good and bad news. Let's start with the bad news. The bad news is related with the kind of streaming that we are going to do today. Uh, until now, and I, I see in the chat some people that uh, follow me in previous streaming, uh, we was doing live code. So we are, we are doing the application uh, between all, um, just writing the code in, in the streamings. And today will be a little bit different because, uh, well, because the application is complete. Oh, audio is too low. Let me try to fix it. <laughs> Probably it's everybody, but uh, better well if not I have an, another mic here that maybe can help yeah <laughs> well we'll try to, to, to improve the audio uh, with this mic and um, as I was talking, the, the session of today will be a little bit different because uh, today we are not go going to do live call and it's mainly because the application is complete. So, um, why the application is completed? Uh, it's because uh, today um, was my turn in, in the Shamarin Y, uh, Julie, that is a, an initiative created in the community to have a new Xamarin article every day of, of Julie um, related with the why. And my main idea for my article was just write about these streamings and uh, talk about this UI challenge. Mm, the initial plan was to complete the, the UI on the past uh, Monday, but uh, as some of you know, because uh, Talked in the in the chat. I joined the summer informs team this week, Woo! and well, I, I I don't want to 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 have any other plan at the beginning of the week and have all the time to you know to, to be able to talk with the team and, and to, to to start as better and as soon as possible. So for that we don't have the the, the streaming in the past Monday and yeah. I, I need to complete the, the, the sample for the article. Today I released the article in Spanish and English. You can take a look. So the code is also on GitHub. Um, today the idea is to remember what we have done in the past session. Remember that, uh, well, mainly we created this, this GIF. We created the main view and all the content of the, um, uh, of the card, of the pop-up. Um, Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you for the audio. Change the mic. I still need to, to improve a little bit, but uh, well, it's nice that uh, the audio is, is not horrible, at least. So yeah, we, we completed the main view and, and the cart uh, sliding menu in the past sessions. And what I completed uh, in my weekend was the detailed view. I included, as you can see, a beautiful parallax effect. In fact, I don't know if this is included in the original design because from the screenshot, I'm not sure. But I think that fit very well in this kind of design. And also, um, there are two important points in this uh, detailed view that are the, the, the specific controls that we don't, we don't have included in Xamarin form. This toggle button 
and this numerical down. So what's my idea for today? Uh, and this is the good uh, the good news. The good news is that uh, we are going to continue. We have in another streaming a little bit different, I know, uh, but the idea is just review the code uh, that you have available now on GitHub on the Artplan Mall um, project and review the, the detail the detail page, the parallax effect and the custom controls, more or less, because the rest of the design is, is too simple. So let's do it. Uh, first of all, let me show what is the final um, result. Uh, we can improve it a little bit more, but uh, well, I think that uh, the moment is okay. So this is the main view. We have the list of uh, of the plant um, yeah by the joke of Samantha we included uh, Miguel as a tomato plant um, no myself as a tomato plant and Miguel as a corn plant uh, if I remember well and also we work it on the cart that is a sliding menu that uh, span from the from the bottom this is what we completed on the past week the main challenge of this part of the why let's review the code until here so we have a main view the main view is is very simple so the thing is that um, we have the title that is just a label and the collection of the plant requires two columns usually in summary forms until now we use the list view as the main control to work with uh, collections then uh, there are another option very interesting uh, that is related with the layout including the bindable layout so we can replicate this user interface also using bindable layout but remember that in this case we are not uh, using virtualization and we don't have all the powerful that uh, we have by default with the collection view so we decide to use the collection view and the key for the two columns is use the items layout property where we use a grid items layout where there are a spam property to set the number in this case of columns this is very simple and very useful and then for every item we have a template we call it, it plan data template if you remember and there aren't anything special here we are using two labels uh, with uh, a custom font. Remember that also in the previous session we included some result dictionary for colors and fonts. And in the fonts one, we included some specific fonts that we extracted from the from the real design. Well, we get it from the comments of the design. I tested it with uh, Above XD and confirmed that these are the fonts. So we are using an image with two labels, the labels the labels using the, uh, the, the specific custom font and the most interesting part is the um, uh, round corners in the match and the small shadow uh, for that what are we using in this case we use the pancake view from steven i think that is the only uh, external Nugget package that we are using. Well, no, we are using also FFV McLaurin. So we are using the pancake view to, to, to set the corner radius and the shadow of, of every match. Nothing very complex here. And then we have the sliding menu. Remember that uh, we worked in this in the previous session, just I'm remembering this. So the a sliding menu is very interesting because it's not um, it's, it's not covering the entry size of the screen and also in the collapse state it's just only showing a, a small piece the header of, of the of the menu and for that we can use some plugin from the community uh, I talked about this in the in the uh, in the article. So one of the options that we can use the slide over kit that is a very famous plugin from the community to work with sliding menus. But in this case, I decide to, to use, use what we have available directly in Xamarin Forms. 
and the menu is, is very simple too it's a content view we uh, added this content view in the main view here and what are we doing is use use summary forms animation to work with the translation in the um, in the eye text to move the, the, the sliding menu from the bottom to the top side. The position at the beginning and the size of the menu is calculated based on one main parameter that is the page height. We get it using the on size allocated uh, event and then we need to know the size of the header. Remember that we set this 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 parameter here in, in Shaml. So the sliding menu is, is very easy too. Then we have another very interesting point, and is that uh, as you can see, here appears a summary of the plants in the cart, and we can see a more detailed list expanding the menu. So at the end we have two visual states. And to manage visual states in Shaman Informs, we have the visual state manager. So what we did here is include and define two visual states, one for uh, spandex state, another one for collapsed one, and expanding and collapsing the main menu, just change the visual state with the go to state method. This is also very, very useful, very, very clean and, and easy to manage these two visual states. And this is every, everything that we, we have done in, in the previous streaming. And we have two more details. One of them is the detail page. And we need, um, we need to define a logic to navigate to this detail page and then we will focus on the custom control yeah spring animation yeah uh, well in in the summary in developer summit i saw a, a beautiful sample from from david from david ortinao that was related with animations uh, was working with um, scroll and playing with the yeah, playing some some animations, uh, playing with the opacity of some elements and and things like that. And watching this, uh, was using one custom library that I had uh, to work. Uh, I have to work with uh, some informs animation that is called some animation and just allowed to to to, to create storyboards and to work with um, with animation from from Shamel. And I saw what uh, he need to do to, to, you know, to, to create all this UI and yeah, we can improve it a lot. So I had many ideas related with animation in, in my head and I want to include some, uh, some behaviors uh, and some triggers related with some uh, summary forms control, like for example, the, the scroll view to suppose the percentage of, of the scroll or the or the position of the scroll, for example, and then I have in mind um, more ways to to easily fire some some animations and yeah, uh, new animations too. So yeah, we, hopefully I, I I will I will be able to to release a new version of some some animation in, in this summer and yeah, want to play with uh, with more animations. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to, to take in and stream in this sample and, and change all this this code behind logic related with uh, the animations and the fade translation all, all this stuff and move all this to to, to sham but uh, if anyone is interested we, we can do it it's, it's something simple so yeah uh, this is what uh, we did in the streamings and now I want to focus on on the things that I completed in, in the past weekend. Sorry about that again, but if we don't did, uh, we will not arrive to, to the date of, of uh, the summary in White Julie article. And I really, really want to, to, to release it. So yeah, let's see what I, I, I complete um, um, in the past weekend. The first thing is 
that we need a detail page. So I created a new content page that will be the detail page. And then we need to navigate from, from the thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I really want, well, I, I, I still am very excited to, to join the team. And yeah, I, I, I hope to, to contribute and to help to continue improving and, and do it some informs the, the, the better framework possible to, to to allow more options and more kind of, of UIs, more possibilities. So yeah, very excited about, about this. And um, yeah, started this week this week and hopefully I, I, I will be able to, to to contribute to do everything still better. So we created the detail page, again a content page and we need to navigate from the main page to the detailed one. The thing is that we was using MVVM and remember that we don't, uh, we didn't include any MVVM framework like Prism or, or another one. And what we did is use a very custom and simple implementation of the MVVM pattern. So for that, I started creating a navigation service. Why I created this navigation service? Well just to allow the navigation from the view model without any reference to the uh, to the view okay so the navigation service is very simple let's review it the first thing is i need uh, well i want to use the, the the view model to to navigate and i don't want to 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 get any reference for for the view in the in the view model and for that i created a dictionary that just map every view with every view model. What we are doing here is expose some public method like this, just navigate to a view model or navigate to a view model passing a parameter. And then in all the case, we are doing an internal navigation. The internal navigation, what we'll do is, well, this version is a modified version. Uh, the shared transition navigation page is a, um, a navigation page from, from a custom plugin uh, that allowed to, to do some transition between the page and also to, to use sharded uh, element transition. I mean, for example, check a plant from, for, from the list, like this one, and animate this image from the first page to the second one in this position. This is possible with this, uh, with this uh, plugin and this is a well idea at the end that uh, I had. I, I I will come with this change soon. And the only change related with the actual public code is the transition between the element and the transition between the between the page. So well, ignoring that, this is just a navigation page. So we are going to do a push of the page, but first. We are going to create here the page, get their view model. We can do it very easily because we know exactly what view model have every page. We have a map uh, here between all the page and all their view models. And directly we are going to set the binding context between the page and the view model. This will simplify a lot our code. Remember that at the beginning we set the building context in the code behind. We also can set the building context directly on Shamil here, content page dot building context. But now it's not necessary because it's something that will do it directly internally, the navigation service. So at the beginning of the, of the application, we are going to call to this init navigation that we call the init analyzer scene that we do use a navigation to the main page well in this case the main the main view model associated with the main page the plant mall view model then in the plant mall view model we was using the collection view if you remember so the collection view had an important property called selected chain command we have also, of course, some, some events to manage uh, the chains of the collection view in, in an event in the, the code behind or just use any trigger or associate with a command or whatever. But we have directly the, the, the command here 
So we are going to bind to, to uh, a specific command in the V model, that is this one. And internally, this uh, V model will get the selected plan and will navigate to the plan detail page sharing this. Whoa, let me, let me uh, um, hide the notification for now. Uh, by the way, Lucio, if you see this streaming in any moment, you, you, you appear in the, in the streaming. And um, yeah, let's continue. So we are going to navigate to the detail page. As you can see, it's very, very simple. And, and we don't have any reference to the view model because we are passing as parameter the selected plan and the detailed uh, view model. In the detailed view model, we have a initialize a scene method that is an override. Why? Where, uh, where we define this? Well, we define it a very, very uh, basic uh, view model base where we have this initialize a scene uh, method that has the navigation parameter. And in the navigation service, we are calling to this uh, method every time that we do uh, a, a push a scene to a new page. So this means that every time that we navigate to a page and we are doing that here in the view model, in the next one here, we are calling from the navigation service to the initialization method and here we can receive directly the um, navigation parameter. And this is very cool because this is directly the plan and you define a, a public property to bind all the content of the plan to the, to the page. Time to focus on the page. So this is the plan detail page. This is the header that is the bind to the, to the match. Ignore this for the moment. We will see it later. Then Ignore also the parallax control. The parallax control at the end is just a scroll, a scroll view. So this is like if we define here something like scroll view, okay? And inside the scroll view, we have a, gr a grid. Again, use the pancake view uh, control from, from Steven. Why? Well, just to create this corner radius from the top of the of the plant content. And then inside we define a, a grid where we have the plant name, the quantity. The quantity is another row. So we have the title or name row, the quantity row, the about row, the description row, and the buy button row. This is all these all these rows that come on. This is all this row that we have defined here. So the name, the quantity, for the quantity, we have a label, of course, with a specific style and a numeric up down control. Not for now the numeric up down control, we will review it later, but it's a, it's a custom control created with a composition of, of another control. I think it's a, it's a content view with some summary forms uh, controls like la labels and, and others, and with some bindable properties to define the behavior that, that we want. Then we have the about, again, another label with the description is the same. At the end, the favorite. The buy button, as you can imagine, we use the pancake view with a composition of elements. And it's the same that we did in the past streaming with the buoy now button from the sliding menu. And just, just this, this is all. So more interesting parts in this, in this view. If this is a scroll view. Hi, Miguel. Um, no, we are not using any MVVM framework. There are very, very amazing MVVM frameworks uh, to use in, in summary forms. Uh, many community for to, to implement very, very well MVVM. But uh, 
the idea with this kind of streaming, well, we focus on, well, it's a challenging white challenge, so we focus on the UI. I want to just try to simplify it, all the logic is related with the, um, with the fake data that uh, we have also here, and also try to simplify the implementation of, of MVVM. Just create a basic implementation that mostly everyone can, can, can follow and understand, and put the focus using the in the UI, but again, this don't mean that uh, there are very nice uh, implementation in the community and with a very nice support. So yeah, it's not just for option; it's just to to try to focus on the UI. But no, we are not using any specific uh, framework. So review with the the detailed page. We have here uh, three details interesting. One of them is the parallax, and then we have the two custom controls. Let me scroll again all the content of the detail page. If anyone have any have any question related with the detail page, just put in the chat, and I will I will love to detail in any specific part. And if not, I'm going to pass to the parallax effect. For the parallax effect, I created a control. All the controls that I created for this application are a composition of uh, some forms uh, controls. I mean, uh, I have not created any custom render or effect to, to, to get the, the UI of this application. We are just using content views with, uh, with uh, styles and other controls to, to manage the 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 UI of, of this of this uh, UI challenge. So the parallax control is very 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 easy. And at the end, a uh, parallax control is something that uh, well exists from the past. Was very used in the past in, in web development and yeah, it's also used in mobile development in the past years. So. The parallax effect wants to, to help to, to put the focus on, on a part of the UI. I mean, when we scroll here from, from the bottom, all the detail of, the, of, of, of a plant, the idea is to scroll in uh, with a different velocity the, the, all the detail panel and they match to put the focus directly on the detail and reduce the relevance of the match very quickly. To do that, we need to, to scroll the match at the same time that we uh, move the scroll of all of the content. This, this will be very easy and it's automatic because um, this will be moved by the, by the scroll. So the only thing that we need to do is also move the, the header, but in another, in, with another velocity. So to do that, we need to, to set um, what is the element that we are going to scroll. In this case, is this image. So here we can create something very generic, like uh, this is type view. For example, so this can be, for example, a layout or, or a specific control. In this case, I set the, the catched image and it's for, for a specific reason. So here we are going to translate the, the, the image. And for the velocity, we will use the scrolly position, but we'll apply a parallax speed um, uh, correction factor to, to reduce the velocity and move the match in, in a velocity very different to, to, the, to the scope, um, to the detail content uh, that will be moved by the, by the scroll. So very easy. Uh, we can improve a lot this behavior. Let me launch again the application to see this. And we can improve here a lot the, the parallax effect because we have access to a catched image. This is an image from FFT McLaurin. And what kind of animation we can apply here directly? 
I mean, in addition to the translation. Well, many times we play with the, um, with the scale too. And in this case, using FFI McLuhan, we can apply, for example, a blur effect to the... Um, <laughs> well, I have installed Hot Reload. I'm very happy that this is now public and I, I, I have not to uninstall or, or disable it from every time that uh, I have done streaming. So yeah, uh, we can apply uh, here more effects like the scale or for example, we can apply um, blur effects to, to the match that will improve a lot the, the effect of the parallax effect. So I don't know, what do you think guys? Um, a blur effect will improve it or not? It's interesting. Yeah, from now I will use Hot Reload always, everywhere, in Visual Studio for Windows and Visual Studio for Mac. I'm very, very happy that this is now public. Uh, everybody knows about it, and we can use it without without worried about anything. And yeah, I will I will use it. Yeah, Blur will be a, a good option here, so we can apply it later. Let's see the, ref, the rest of the um, details in the detailed page. And yeah, let's take a look to the design. And we have here a numeric up down, or steeper, or well, receive many names depending on the framework. Um, but at the end is a control that uh, allow to, to set a value between a minimum and a maximum. So now that shell, visual, collection view and the carousel view is coming, yeah, the carousel view is coming, we are just missing a few tools to make every app looks amazing so yeah i'm very interested in this part and i don't know if any anybody anyone um, was in the summary developer summit here here we had um, some feedback from the community about uh, what is the nest that um, that everybody want and in the top position there was feedback about improved the performance mostly the startup performance for that uh, probably some of you have seen some some uh, forms related with uh, performance uh, david was sharing that in on, on twitter on, on the past days and of course there were also option to to vote like uh, uh, yeah, transitions, for example, like corner radius and gradient, shadows and all this. But uh, yeah, it was surprising because, for example, the corner radius was um, less less votes that uh, I expected. So yeah, so I'm very interested in, the, in this in this topic. So please just uh, share in the chat what kind of um, controls or effects what would you expect in the future for for summary forms to 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 allow to create more beautiful and amazing uh, applications the directly from from the framework so blink along from your feedback i can imagine that uh, yeah uh, you use pancake view i use it also in this in this application so I can imagine that you expect also corner radius, uh, gradients and shadows. And more feedback, Miguel, yeah, the Android started in the back. So this is another interesting topic. Uh, what will remote to do you? The, uh, I see that, uh, well, the, the ice performance usually is better. Uh, there are more concerns related with the Android's, Android performance. Uh, mostly in the startup time, but um, the feedback that uh, we are reading is more about uh, uh, debugging sessions. So, are you? Do you want more more performance uh, with all the debug stuff than in release mode or in both cases? 
yeah exactly so it's more to improve the um, yeah the time between you try to start the, the debugger and you you see the application launch it in the device or the emulator right yeah cool so this is very interesting feedback and now i'm able to to share with the team um, i'm not sure if if David is still connected, but if he if he's still connected, we'll will love this kind of feedback. So yeah, please continue sharing what you think and what do you expect about um, yeah about all this topic related with um, how to create easily more beautiful uh, UIs in the future. And yeah, very appreciated. So let's continue with the. Um, uh, with the summary why challenge so in this case we was talking about the custom controls we have the numeric up down and the toggle button so yeah I, we have many 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 options and by the way this is another of the topics that was possible to vote in the summary developer summit and was about the navigation bar that usually and if I close this design, I have many, many, many designs in favorites that, uh, yeah, probably my idea in the future will be use share two options um, or some options in, in Twitter, uh, probably two options. And yeah, uh, let to everybody to decide between one uh, or, or other, uh, for example, the first design with a favorite and the second one with a retweet and this is probably how I will continue with the streamings we'll, we'll share two of the uh, designs and let's leave that uh, anyone in the community decide what uh, uh, what uh, which, what uh, will be the, the next one to, to do in, in a streaming session so yeah, if, if I re review any design from from these uh, beautiful designs another very common option is the um, the work that usually is necessary with the um, navigation bar right because yeah many case where the navigation bar need to be uh, transparent other case where need custom content and yeah this is another another option that uh, usually then we need to to do and in this sample is the only custom render that i did so so ignoring that let's focus on the custom controls for the custom controls again we have many options we have the custom render option we can use uh, skia skia sharp to to create uh, this control with exactly the same appearance uh, in a perfect pixel perfect mode or we can create something more more simple and in, in this sample I want to share that uh, yeah in some case you can create new UI new control use using summary forms elements use using um, content views frames uh, labels and, and other stuff so I decided to, to, to create this custom control just using summary forms element and we have these elements here hey hi IoT Fair. welcome welcome so yeah we was reviewing um, what we have done in the past streaming in, in the summary UI challenge with in the art plan more design and I shared that uh, I completed the design this, this past weekend because I want to, go to have everything done for for uh, the summoning why Julie article that I released today and now we are reviewing the custom controls so just to, to focus you in what we are doing so yeah let's see the numeric up down control for the numeric up down control I use that shameful file because I want to define this uh, custom UI very uh, very easily it's again a pancake view why well can be also a frame but at the end I use it because it was using in other part, parts of the of the UI and the only thing that I need is um, a, a view 
uh, that can contain uh, another element that allow me to set a corner radius as you can see in the design uh, a border color and define the, the border thickness too and then the content is, is, is simple it's just a grid with three columns the minus, the plus option and the value text then in the code behind I define it three, no, four uh, bindable properties of kind uh, using a, a double type one to, to set the value this is the main property and is what uh, we will use here in the level of the center then we define a minimum option a maximum option and also a step the step is uh, if we want to increase the value in you know in, in something different that uh, one by one but to have a reusable control or a control that can be used in, in another you know in another application and other conditions we need to continue adding more properties we added this these four properties but for example if we want to allow to customize all the control we need to to, to allow to set the, the background color the border color the text color the border thickness the corner radius and other option and also we can include other kind of uh, properties for example uh, if we want to to execute an animation every time that uh, the user press the minus or, or plus button uh, well we can include uh, properties like animate true or false or things like that in this case we have the the basic properties and what we did is include uh, events uh, using tap gesture recognizer every time that we tap on the minus or plus uh, label we are entering in this event we are animating to 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 give some kind of feedback it's like was um, pressing the, the, the option and then set the value I mean uh, the, the maximum case is very easy while the value is less than the uh, maximum value just increase the value by the step hey Steven hello hello we was talking about the um, uh, art plan mold summoning white challenge and mention mentioned you sometimes because I think that I use it, the um, uh, pancake view mostly everywhere I think that I use it in the main view and also in the detail view so yeah welcome and for the minus option um, yeah is the uh, uh, while the value is less the um, less the step was higher than the minimum use reduce and if not will be the the minimum value the value is uh, binded to the text of the center using a, a binding this is also possible use using shaml and this is all um, numeric up down control let's take a, a look to the behavior and the appearance of, of this control but as you can see we did it without any custom render or anything special If anyone is asking what was the message that he, we had in, in the top side of um, Visual Studio, was an error related with hot reload, and it's because I'm using a uh, old version of Xamarin Forms. But don't worry, because it's a uh, expected uh, expected behavior. So yeah, we was talking about um, the numeric up down. So yeah, remember the the layout and the border is created using the pancake view from Steven the content are three levels the minus and, and plus button and the value that now just allow to, to, to work as expected the minimum is set to 1 and maximum to, to 10 
Uh, yeah, I can repeat every everything that I said uh, in the last 10 minutes uh, because uh, we are recording the streaming, so you can see it later. <laughs> but no, anyway, we, we was talking about the numeric up down and describing how I did it um, and how to create, uh, you know, uh, a specific control use using some informs elements. So this is what we was talking about in the past uh, 10 minutes. So this is the numeric up down, very easy to, to recreate. And then we have the, um, um, the toggle button. For the toggle button, we have an specific appearance that is this one. And yeah, to do it in a good way, probably we need to, to create something more complex. But in this case, I'm following this, the, the logic from, from the numeric up down. What I did is create again a content view with some uh, necessary uh, bindable properties. The most important one are the check it one that manage the state of the toggle button, check it or uncheck it. And then for every state, we will uh, define two Emax source uh, properties to define using an image what is the appearance use, uh, with the checked state and what is the appearance with the unchecked state. So yeah, again, very, very easy control. The most important part is, is here. Every time that we change the check it, we change uh, the status, the image, and depending of uh, if we are uh, using the animation or not, we are doing this small animation to, to play with the scale and give some kind of feedback that the, the, the toggle button was, was pressed. So as you can see, with a small, a little of an uh, uh, um, imagination and, and using some informs element, we can create, uh, um, we have a lot of powerful, we can create uh, complex um, UIs and complex control. And in this case, this is what uh, we did. And I think that I have not anything else. The last thing that uh, I will commit is related with the page transitions. I'm using for the page transition a plugin that is called Summary Plugin Share Transition. It's a plugin from the community. I collaborated with this plugin adding more transition efforts and some, some fix. And it's very, very easy to use. At the end, remember that in the navigation service, we are using a shared transition navigation page instead of a navigation page. And this allows us to, every, in every page, we can set the kind of animation that we want to use, like this. We can set the animation between, between a list. For example, we can use fade, flip, slide from, from bottom or whatever for example let's put a slide from bottom we can set the duration of the animation uh, in this case is very very quickly but we can reduce it and let's see the the result so the first thing that allows this this uh, plugin is set the um, kind of tra translation between the page and then we have another most interesting um, functionality and it's related with the shared element transition that, uh, yeah, you probably saw this effect, but it's the effect where we can tap over the match and, for example, here, and do the animation of translation of this, anima this image from here to this position, uh, giving a sensation of continuity, you know. And this is also possible with this, uh, with this plugin. Let's wait a little bit and yeah, I don't know if you see, but now the animation is used uh, a translation from from the bottom. So we can customize this for, for every page. And then the other interesting logic with this um, plugin is related with the, I need to complete that and, and commit, but it's related with the shared element transitions. It's very easy. At the end, we have the collection view here. 
and define the aspect of uh, every plant with a data template that is defined here. In this template, we define a, a identifier for, for every element and also a group. A group is, is used if, if, if we are using a collection. You know? So in this case, we have uh, an integer associated with, uh, with every, every match. And then in the detail page, the only thing that we need to do is set to the other element, in this case, again, an image, the, uh, the tag, uh, or what is the same, the identifier of the plan. With this and some small change that I had pending in the navigation page that are related with the group, we will have also um, shared the element transition. If anyone wants to see this working in uh, another sample, I have a specific sample related with transition that is Art News. And you can see this effect here. Is this this kind of effect? So this this is the latest thing that I will include in this um, in this UI challenge. So at the end, let's review it very quickly. We use it, the collection view for the uh, uh, plant list. We created the uh, content view and use it summary forms animation translation to, to animate the, the sliding menu. We use it for the corners, uh, the um, uh, pancake view from, from Steven. It's, um, for the match, we use it FF Himal loading. Then for the navigation and transition, we use the Xamarin plugin uh, shared transition. And for the custom controls, as you have seen, we create content views with using some BW properties to, to use. It's a composition of Xamarin forms element. And the only render that we need is this one uh, in the detail page. And it's related with the uh, navigation page to uh, have a transparent navigation bar is the only thing that uh, was necessary in this in this control and that's all yeah uh, what did you use for the navigation uh, yeah for the navigation i use it a uh, plugin let me show you the name of the plugin it's available on github so it's a uh, it's open source of course so um, from Gianpaolo is called Xamarin plugin shared transitions and it's exactly the same uh, plugin well it's not exactly the same because in this sample mm, there was some some issues uh, i explained here a little bit there was some issues that i fixed uh, and yeah i had more more peg transition and in this sample i think that the, the yeah I include all the code of the all of the plugin here with the fixes, but uh, now I send this with some pull requests and was merged, uh, and now we are you we are using the the 1.1 version of the of the plugin that includes all these all these changes. So we are using that to do the page transition and also for the shared element transition. I need to complete small lines to get it working. But uh, use that. So I think that that's all. Uh, so we use it uh, collection view, we use it animation, we use it the visual state manager to manage the two visual state of the sliding menu, the collapser and expanded uh, state. And we use it, uh, what more? I think that that's all. We get some custom controls and the parallax effect the only plugin that we are using is the um, uh, pancake view the shared uh, uh, navigation and ff mac loading and the only custom render that was uh, required was the then the, the one related with the navigation page to, to allow transparent navigation page So there are uh, another question that is 
when you are using content views in all the project, this is the end of the custom render or it's not the same? Well, it's at the end, all the, um, you know, summary forms uh, allow to create uh, annuai sharing the same code because uh, give us an abstraction, but this abstraction in every platform at the end create na native controls. So uh, with the content views, uh, in every platform and with labels and all this stuff, we are creating also uh, 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 native controls. We are using uh, a new label in the case of iOS and you know all, all, all the native stuff. So what I I want to to share with this sample is that um, yeah, in many many cases, uh, and I want to help to reduce this this case, you need to create a custom render but it's not necessary in all the case i mean for example one let let me put an example with the um, functionality related uh, with the bin double layout that was included in the uh, previous version of summary forms it's a name some uh, feature but uh, at the end you need to know when to use it i mean using bin double layout at the end you are repeating layout any times and you are not reusing cells you are not playing with the virtualization logic and all this stuff and if we have if we have here a list of 10 plants for example and we will have only 10 plants because we show the top 10 plants of the of the store well I mean double layout in this case is okay you know but if the list have I don't know, hundreds of plants. Uh, in this case, the collection view is the, is the right option. The same occurs in, in other case. In this numeric uptown control, something like we did uh, using uh, some content, uh, content view with some la labels, uh, BW properties, and create a, a custom control. It's okay. Uh, it's possible, it's, it's easy, it's simple, and it's another option. And this is what I, I want to share. But uh, of course, this, this will not kill uh, the custom render. You, you, you still need to, to, to use custom render in some specific case. So in case where you need some customization of specific of the platform, when you require more performance and, and another option, the custom render still will be uh, necessary. So yeah, just there are different options, but uh, I think the best practice, Summary Forms developer is zero use of custom render and allow Summary native developers to build plugins for Summary Forms developer. Well, it's, it's a good idea and hopefully uh, uh, I, I hope to, to, to contribute to that, to include you know more properties in, in the actual controls or new future controls or whatever to, to help to, for example, to, to reduce the, the um, the plugins or, or the custom render that we require in this in this uh, in this case, uh, we will love to to take again this uh, UI in one year, for example, and see um, how much we can improve just using some forms. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, sometimes it's necessary to use a custom render, and yeah. Uh, I just want to share that there are many options. You know, we, we, we can create this with a custom render. We can create this as we did using uh, use content content views and and, and and some labels. We can use SkiaShop, for example. And there are many options. So just wanted to show another one. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. Uh, I know that uh, sometimes in the community there was uh, the mistake in with the words, custom renders and custom controls, composite controls, composition controls. Yeah, <laughs> I hear um, multiple names to, to, to call the same. So yeah, maybe it's something that uh, helps to, to think about it. And yeah, maybe we can improve it a little bit and, and, and share. Uh, a more simpler result to, to, to everyone, but yeah, it's not the same, okay?
what we need in developing best practice for a use content view where the building content is passed to the containing page seems no matter at which level deep down the content view is instantiated. Yeah, this is a good practice, definitely. So I think that I cover everything that I wanted today. Again, I'm so sorry to no live code today and yeah, don't continue from the previous step from um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to, to complete everything for the summary while you article. So yeah, I completed on the weekend. And my idea for today was use um, um, was use uh, share uh, everything that was pending from the past week with, with you today and be able to do what we are doing. Just, just chat a little bit and share some impressions, some questions, some feedback, and that, that's amazing because it helps us a, a lot. So, Ferran, you are asking what was the problem with FFC McLaughlin on the past week. So, if anyone was on the past week or if anyone uh, watched the, the streaming of the past week, uh, we added the, the, the plugin and trying to do the initialization, the app delegate or all the um, uh, main activity. We was getting a problem because uh, FFC McLaughlin was not recognized. And what I did was close Visual Studio, clean and rebuild. It's the, it's the only thing that I did. Uh, nothing very, very special. We are using exactly the same version, the same package, and everything is working. Uh, so probably, I don't know, probably I, I included it, uh, I don't know, very quickly or some, something wrong happens or I have something wrong in the output or I, I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, just clean and build again and, and the problem was fixed. So we are in the last minute. I don't know if anyone has more questions. Please use the chat. Yeah, mysteries of Visual Studio, right. Well, I worked on Visual Studio on Mac and yeah, there are many, um, many situations and many cases and still improving. So <laughs> hopefully, in, well, I, I, I think that uh, version by version, everything is, is getting better and better. So yeah, let's continue improving. Anyone had any other question, feedback? Well, uh, I used the live channel in the past streamings uh, because Hot Reload was not uh, public. So, yeah. And it's very funny because I I was testing Hot Reload from, well, I don't remember, but for sure, from the beginning of the streamings, I, I, I had the first uh, internal version of Hot Reload. And of course, I, I was testing a lot um, uh, from the beginning, in VS4 Windows and VS4 Mac, I think that is a very lovely and expected feature. So I start testing from the beginning. And the funny thing is that uh, I uninstall Hot Reload before every streaming to, <laughs> to I don't know, I, I, I worried about uh, get any error, miss up, any pop up, any, any anything related with this and, and reveal the mystery. So... <laughs> I was not using Hot Reload because it was not public. Uh, used it like Reload, and we talked about many other options, many community options uh, in the past streaming uh, to do exactly the same. But uh, I write an, an article this week related with Hot Reload, just showing how it works with some very beautiful UIs and using a lot of stuff. I mean, using custom renders, using Skiashar, using and yeah take a look in my blog because it's working very very well but uh, yeah it's public now so we will use from now uh, in the next stream but uh, until now it wasn't possible yeah steven you are right uh, it was not public until the the past week We need to keep hot reload hooks, otherwise it gets revamped at hot, hot reboot load. 
too many dates in the last week and before to multiple attempts. Well, I hope that you get access to the preview very soon and we'll keep, um, uh, we'll test and use it a little bit. And I think that you will be happy with, with it uh, in this current state. And we are still improving and, and, and uh, thirsting for, for new features uh, to cover all the uh, all the expectation, all, all the um, uh, feedback that we have re received in the community related with um, you know improve the cycles of, of the development and, and what's necessary in, in, in this case. So I think that you will be happy. I, I I'm really really happy with the work that the team have done with the hot reload, the summer hot reload, and I think that uh, we'll continue improving. Uh, in the future so yeah use use if you don't uh, have done uh, it yet uh, use register for the previews and hopefully you will get access soon and after that please share the feedback with, with me I, I will I will love to, to, to read your feedback about it and of course uh, we will continue with uh, streamings uh, in the future, what I will do, well, I told that before, but probably what I will do is just take two of these designs and ask you on Twitter, uh, uh, favorite if you prefer the first one, retweet if you prefer the second one, and we will continue with uh, some UI challenge in, in the future in, in another streamings, and of course in this in these streamings I will use Hot Reload. Well, thank you, thank you. I'm very excited to join the, the, the team. Uh, collaborated a lot in, in the past from, from years. And, and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's amazing to be part of, of the team and, and you know, to, to review uh, issues, to get feedback to, 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 to customers, to, to, to be able to, to work on, on new features. Well, I'm still not doing that, but hopefully will will do and yeah i i really love the framework and, and will love to 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 contribute and help to, to continue improving and you mentioned the monkey conf probably yeah you are from spain uh, but probably nobody more will will know about what what the hell is the monkey conf so the monkey conf is the biggest spanish summoning event that uh, we had in in spain uh, we started the past year, at the end of the past year, we had uh, an event in Madrid, that is uh, the capital of, uh, of Spain, and we had two, two tracks uh, of, of sessions, like 14 sessions, if I remember well, and another track for workshops, I, I did a very, very, very funny workshop. And my idea for this year is um, uh, my idea for this year is to to do it again, of course, and to try to continue improving. Try to do it uh, uh, biggest uh, with uh, more attendees and more sessions. We'll try to invite um, people from the community. And Steven, I know that you don't speak Spanish, but. Uh, you can do a very very nice session in English, and I think that uh, in Spain mostly everyone will be able to to follow you. And if not, if you come, I will translate to, to you. Don't worry, <laughs> just come. And yeah, we'll try to to combine to to some teammates or I don't know someone from from the team to to try to come to the event this year too. I I don't promise anything. Uh, I know that it's a very bad uh, time in the year because it's in December, you know, the, the, the holidays and the Christmas is, is very, very close. So we'll see what can we do. But uh, what I want to do is uh, after the summer, start preparing everything. And yeah, we'll, we'll try to do a big event this year. 
I know that uh, all the community uh, want to repeat it, so we will do it. And yeah, well, of course I can share all my likes in, in Dribble. And what I will do is also, uh, no, yeah, I will share all the all the likes in my Dribble. It helps in, in to someone. Uh, it's nice. Uh, what I do is uh, every week or every two weeks I see the top designs in, in Dribble and, and include some of one in, in my favorite list. And now I have hundreds of them, so we can do Chamberlain White Challenge for, for the next years, probably. So don't worry, I will show it. So any other feedback, question, anything else? If not, again, thanks so much for joining to everyone. Uh, I'm very happy with this kind of experience. Uh, use with the light coding and, and with the steaming sessions, I receive a lot of feedback. I receive um, um, another uh, a lot of comments, and I'm learning uh, with this. And hopefully, you you are doing the same. So, thank you so much to everyone. Uh, probably soon we'll share on Twitter two of this design to decide with uh, which one we will continue. And see you on the next one. On the next one. Have a nice morning, afternoon, or day, and see you. Thanks a lot.